Thanks for joining us again. We have a good study in line for you today, but we'll be, be sure you get a pencil, paper, get your Bible out, because I want you to test to see whether these things will be so. But before we study Scripture, what is our habit? We go to God in prayer. So why don't you, where you can, kneel with me as we pray together. Kind, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of prayer. We thank you that we have a Heavenly Father who cares for us. Today we invite the Holy Spirit to come near to our hearts and our lives. Touch each and every one of us that our ears may be open, that we may hear a word in due season that will change our life and equip us for your soon coming. Father, we pray for everyone that views, that listens around the world, whatever means that you see fit, the hearts and lives will be changed, not for just today, but for eternity. Thank you for this privilege to lift up Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Again, we have a lot of material to cover, so we're going to go as quickly as we can because this is dynamite. We talked about in our first two messages that we have about the necessity of preparing to meet Jesus, and there are qualifications to receiving the latter rain. Now, if we do not receive the latter rain, we're not going through the time of trouble, and we certainly are not going to be able to go to heaven. So this is, we call it life and death. The importance of this subject, we cannot, uh, you know, overestimate. We need to pay special attention to this subject today. And we're going to be talking about living up to all the light that God has given to us. So I ask you this question, are you living up to everything that you know to be true? If not, God's not going to give us any more light. We have to live up to it. So we are challenged with that, and we're going to have to ask for God's guidance to help us on it. You know, those who are living up to the light can expect that God is going to shine on the pathway greater light, especially in these closing scenes of earth's history. I want to know how near it is to the coming of Jesus, don't you? I want to be prepared, and this is part of of being prepared to receive the latter rain. Are we qualified and are we living up to that light? Uh, I'm going to start with a, a passage there, the Nine Testimonies 182. I'm going to read this to you, and I want you to pay special attention to it. It says, The Lord brings His erring children over the same ground. Now, why does God bring us over and over the same ground? Notice, again and again. If they continually fail to heed the admonitions of His Spirit, if they fail to reform on every part, at every point where they have erred, He will finally leave them to their own weakness. What is God telling us here? He takes us over and over the same ground so that we may do what? Good. Gain the victory. If we're not gaining the victory, He leads us again and again and again. And finally, if we just really don't care anymore, He just finally leaves us to our own weaknesses. That means we're not going to be saved in God's kingdom. You know, the book of John, chapter 12, verse 35, it says we need to walk in the light, you know, and if we don't, we're going to what? Darkness is going to overtake us. So we need to be walking while the light is shining on the path right now. If we could only, in our mind, say, God, help me to understand the hour in which we are living, how close we are to the coming of Jesus, and the necessity of God's people waking up, we have a message to give that is a specific message message to give to the world. It is a message that will prepare people to meet Jesus. It's not going to be an easy one. It's going to be a very challenging message, but God is asking us to give that message. Now, Jesus gave instructions when someone will say, well, you know, we shake the dust off our feet. I want you to pay special attention to this, because when Jesus gave the 12 uh, instructions as he sent them out to different locations, notice what Jesus said, Matthew 10, verse 14. So you're writing these things down, I'm sure. And he said, Whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words. Notice, when you depart out of the house or of the city, shake off the dust of your feet. What does that mean? Some people say, well, we just don't, we're just going to shake off the dust and we're just going to leave them. Jesus said, if they're not going to hear, and I'm, I'm challenging with that day, if you're not going to hear, if you're not going to listen, what may be the result? Jesus said, shake off the dust off your feet. I got to thinking about that. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 20 says this, All are of the dust. All shall return to dust. 
So I'm looking at it. Okay, what is God saying? Shake off the dust off your feet here. So man then equals what? Dust. That's what the Bible said. Earth, clay. And in Genesis 2, uh, 7, Jesus says that man is made out of what? Good. The dust of the earth, right? The elements of the earth. And so Jesus says in Matthew 10, verse 14, shake off, listen, the whitewash. Shake off that lime. Shake off the loose dirt or the rubbish of man. Huh. The time comes maybe that man says, I'm not going to hear, I'm not going to obey. Jesus says you're going to have to let him alone, and we're going to have to go to the highways and byways and get where people are interested in the Word. See, we cannot war against the Spirit. There are some people when they hear the message, they begin to war against those who are giving the message. They begin to war against God. We can't do that. God brings the message. In fact, Jesus said this in Matthew 10, 34. He said, this is interesting, I came not to bring peace, but a sword. Have you ever thought about that? He said, I came to, what, not to bring, I didn't bring peace, but I, a sword. Because that sword, it what, rightly divides and separates, even in the family sometimes. When the truth comes, one will accept it, the other will not accept it. Testimonies to Ministers 507 gives this statement, boy, is it powerful. It says, there must be no neglect of the grace represented by the former reign. Only those who are living up to the light they have, that's our subject for today, will receive greater light. Unless we are daily advancing in the exemplifications. What does that mean? That means showing by example of the active Christian virtues. This is important, stay with me. We shall not recognize, that means we are not going to be identified, we're not going to be able to know in detail the manifestations of the Holy Spirit in the latter reign. Now that is a lot said, but I want you to think about that. We're going to be talking quickly about active Christian virtues. Have you thought about that, lady? Active Christian virtues. What are they and what, what part do they play in our relationship with Christ and being prepared to receive the latter rain? I hope you're going to catch this point here. There's several of them we want to see because we're going to be looking at these active Christian virtues and what they develop in us. When I think about uh, the character of God and I think about the coming of Jesus and what's going to be qualified to, to repopulate heaven, I, I think always about the, the seal of God. The seal of God in the, in the forehead. See, here in these last days, we must realize that the seal, and I'm going to make a big statement here, and some people's not going to understand this, but many of you are. But God's going to put the seal in the forehead of those who keep all of the commandments, including the seventh-day Sabbath. He can't seal anyone here in the last days that are living, unless they're, what, by God's grace, keeping all the commandments, including the seventh-day Sabbath. Oh, the fourth commandment, uh, what? It's the sign and, and the seal, isn't it, of God? He's our creator, isn't it? He's our redeemer, he's our sustainer, right? He's, he's, he's the head of this world. It has, the, it has the seal in it. And so God wants us to keep that. And, uh, you know, the Sabbath is a sign, Ezekiel 31, 13 tells us, right? It's a sign between God and us, especially here in the last days. And so we see the righteous, living righteous is going to receive that seal of the living God you see. And so we need to be ready because God is wanting to pour His Spirit out upon us. Jesus said, as He spoke of our duty and our love for our fellow man in the book of Matthew 22, 37 through 40. Now these are a lot of verses, but I, you know, read them when you have the opportunity to do it. I'll just put it in a nutshell here. It says, love the Lord thy God with what? Good. All thy heart, with all thy what? Soul, and with all thy what? Mind, and thy neighbor as what? As thyself. When this is accomplished through His grace, we shall be complete in Him. Think about that. When we accomplish this, you say, well, this is, this is a grace. When we accomplish this, what? Our love supreme for God. When we dedicate our soul, our body, our mind, and we love our neighbor as ourself, we're going to see what we're going to become complete in Him. On these two hang all the law. See, hopefully we're, we're getting a, and developing in our third part here of are we qualified to receive the latter rain, a, a bear, healthy understanding of these tr Christian graces, these virtues that are essential in our climb toward heaven. They are essential. 
they will change us into the image of Jesus. And we've tried to challenge you to think some things through. And, uh, and, and, and we've come to this point. Unless we are daily advancing in the cause of Christ, these active Christian virtues, we're not even going to recognize the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the latter rain. So I hope you see what we've been talking about, these what Christian graces, these virtues, and we went over these virtues, unless we're daily what? Advancing in these right here, we won't even, ooh, we won't even recognize the Holy Spirit, you see, when it falls down. There may be somebody right beside of you in church receiving it, and you're not receiving it. Because you don't recognize it, because you're not advancing in those Christian graces. So how important then is it that we recognize this? Oh, it's important that we recognize it, but we have to we receive the latter rain. Let me just read this before we close today with prayer. 1 Testimony 187. This, will just, this may jar you right out of your seat. You better fasten yourself down. Those who come up to every point, stand every test, overcome, be the price what it may, have heeded the counsel of the true witness, they will receive the latter rain and thus be fitted for translation. Those who are going to receive the latter rain, do, are you getting this here? You're going to have to come every point, every test, we're going to have to gain a victory. And we've overcome. Stand every test and overcome. Be the price what it may. No matter what it costs you in this life, it's going to be worth it. Isn't it? Spend eternity with Jesus. Oh, you think, oh, it may cost you some, seem like some friends and some things in this life, dear friend. It's going to be worth it one day. In fact, it's going to be worth it the first second that we see Jesus, isn't it? Why not turn your life over him, to Him today? Let the true witness lead out in your life. Follow His counsel. Live for Him. Daily be advancing in these virtues and graces. And I tell you, dear friends, we're going to receive of that latter rain. We're going to be fitted for translation. I know you want to. Well, somebody make that decision right now. We're going to pray about it. You're reaching out right now by faith and you want that. You want that perfection to carry. You want to see Jesus. You want to be ready when Jesus comes. And you know that He's going to give you that power that you need and victory over sin. Some of you are struggling with alcohol and tobacco and drugs and running the streets and this and that. God is able, dear friend. He's bigger. His grace is bigger than what than any sin. Why don't we pray about that right now as you're lifting your heart toward the very throne room of God. I'd like to pray for you, and I want you to pray for me. Pray for the ministry as we move forward here, that God's going to give us these enabling powers. Let's pray about it, shall we? Merciful Father in heaven, we thank you for your precious word today. Pray for the power of the Holy Spirit for those right now who are reaching out by faith and saying, God, I want a different life. I want to gain these victories. And I pray that you'll give them that victory. Give them the desire of their heart right now. And I pray it in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen.